In you, Lord, I have found my peace. Peace comes when we follow the way of the King, our God and Father, through the Son, who is Master and Christ. It's a peace the world cannot give. Back in June, I had the opportunity to travel with my best friend and his parish to the Holy Land in Egypt. It was an amazing experience to be able to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. They call it the fifth gospel because being in the Holy Land opens the scriptures to you in a way that cannot be explained just by reading them. I feel like I learned enough material in just 10 days for a whole degree. My preaching has changed immensely. I can almost picture the scene in today's gospel except for the fact that the temple was destroyed back in 70 AD, and all that is left of it is the western or wailing wall, which I touched while leaving some intentions in the cracks of the wall, as many pilgrims do. I did not know at the time that a friend of mine I had made in Bethlehem would experience bomb blasts just 50 yards away from his house in a few short months. There is now war in the Holy Land, the land where our peace came from. Over these last weeks in Matthew's Gospel, we've been following a great debate between Jesus and the religious authorities and parties in the temple. After silencing both the Sadducees and the Pharisees, Jesus turns now to his disciples, the crowds, to warn them not to follow the example of the proud, but to humbly follow him. Jesus teaches us that we must be servants if we want to be great, not serve ourselves and our own interests. This is the pathway to peace. Since the war broke out in Israel, many people have taken to social media and the streets to protest on many sides of the conflict. Fear has broken out on college campuses as anti-Semitism rises and anger over ages-old territory disputes gets confused with supporting terrorism. We might be tempted to jump right in with our own opinions and get angry ourselves. I find myself completely edified by the example of Cardinal Pizzaballa of Jerusalem, who while calling for an end to the war, has offered himself in exchange for the Jewish hostages in Gaza. That is an example of finding peace that the world cannot give. Being completely resigned to give up your own life for another, not even caring about the religious difference of the person you are ready to sacrifice for. Unfortunately, there's often in the church examples where pride gets the best of us clergy and laypersons alike. We often put our needs ahead of others. We often fight over theological views or jockey for positions on committees or promotions. We see it in the way people view the Holy Father or opine about the synod. We sometimes see groups and parishes fighting or even parishes against other parishes. When we do this, we're like the Levites in the first reading who turn aside from the way and scandalize the faithful by preaching what we do not practice. Can we not see that this does no, no good for evangelization if we're constantly involved in many wars with each other? How do we stop it? How can we find peace? We simply come back to the master. We lay down our burdens before him. He is the Word of God incarnate, truly at work in us who believe. During this Eucharistic revival, more and more opportunity is being made to attend Eucharistic adoration. When we kneel before the monstrance in a holy hour or maybe just minutes by the tabernacle, we are invited to experience the silence of the Master, a peaceful encounter with the one who has all the answers. At this Mass, we do the same. Before we approach the altar, the priest extends to us that peace which the world cannot give and invites us to share it with each other. 
Then we receive Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity into our very hearts. And from this encounter, he redirects our frustrations by the peace of his presence. From our humble time with Jesus, we find the courage to be humble servants of our brothers and sisters. We find the courage to love others who are different from us or even hate us. As we pray for an end to war, let us humbly acknowledge the peace that surpasses all human understanding. In you, Lord, I have found my peace.